everybody. Week 13 of the college football season is almost here. It's almost here, and we're ready. Of course, there's going to be games on Thanksgiving, but who cares about those games when we have better options on Thanksgiving? But Black Friday is going to be fun. And Iowa State's dreams of potentially making the college football playoff, dare I say it? Yes, I will say it. I will say it. If Oklahoma at number 11 has a chance, then you most definitely can say that Iowa State can and will, you know, jump up if they, you know, get some big victories on their hands because there's a lot of Big 12 teams that are ranked in the top 25 right now. And their biggest test of the season is against my Texas Longhorns, who are ranked number 17 in the nation. And that game will be at 11 or noon if you live on the East Coast, of course. And what I think this game will come down to is Brock Purdy, you know, I think it'll come down to him. If, you know, if Iowa State can get rolling, you know, because there's a lot of tight ends at Iowa State, you know, if they can get rolling and stop the Texas offense, which runs only four plays, I'm just telling you that because I know, um, you know, things could look very interesting. Iowa State controls their own destiny at this point. They control everything here the Big 12 because they're in first place. They control. They're in control, and they have the opportunity to take themselves to a championship game appearance if they beat Texas. Now, Sam Ellig is going to have something to say about that, but, you know, and Iowa State is on the road, so it's going to be, going to be something. Now, I have no idea why I was ranked, but they are taking on a struggling Nebraska team. Honestly, I don't care for this matchup at all. Iowa really shouldn't be ranked, but whatever. 3.30, 2.30, depending on where you live at. Notre Dame, number two in the nation, travels to North Carolina. Sam Howell, vaunted running attack by the Tar Heels. Takes on a Notre Dame defense that is stingy, that is defiant, that is abhorrent. And by abhorrence, I mean they're a damn good defense. And if Notre Dame continues their dominance on defense, it's going to be a long day. Ian Book and company on offense, this ain't, this ain't the Dukes of the world. This ain't the Wake Forest of the world. This is North Carolina. You have to play a complete game. You have to play like you're in a heavyweight fight with Clemson. You have to play like you're in a fight with Clemson again. If you're going to prove yourselves, Notre Dame, have at it. You have to do it. You have to beat North Carolina handily. So there's that. Um, again, if North Carolina gets going because they can score at will and Notre Dame can't stop them, it's going to be a long day. And if Notre Dame... You know, has one of those, you know, early season Notre Dame moments where they can't score any points. It's going to be a rough day for the Fighting Irish. But the Fighting Irish have to play a complete game against the ranked opponent. They have to play complete games. You can't be sloppy. And lastly on Friday is Oregon taking on Oregon State. Oregon State's a rough team to watch. Watched them the first week the Pac-12 came back. Rough to watch the Beavers. Now, Oregon's ranked at number 15, and you know, things aren't looking too good for the Pac-12 right now, but you know, if Oregon gets this win, they'll move up a little bit, hopefully they got it, but if they don't, that's your playoff chances gone. Any team in the Pac-12 that loses, playoff hopes are completely dashed, gone, non-existent. So, yeah, but Saturday, Saturday, Saturday gives us a quadruple slate at noon. You know, Texas Tech goes to Oklahoma State, number 23 ranked Oklahoma State, by the way. Um, how will the 
Cowboys respond after, you know, getting throttled by Oklahoma last Saturday night. Maryland takes on Indiana, number 12 ranked Indiana. I'll be keeping my eyes on this game um, along with Kentucky and Florida. Should be interesting to see how Kentucky plays against Florida. They play they played the Gators pretty tough. And if the Gators lose this game, there's no telling what in the world could happen, you know. Because by all means, if the Gators lose, they're out of the playoff race. Ohio State's going to Illinois, and Illinois has done some things before, you know, to Ohio State. They've done some things before. I can think of 2007. You know, one of the wildest seasons ever in in college football that I can think of off the top of my head. But Ohio State just has to keep winning. That's all they got to do. And hope that Northwestern keeps winning as well. Speaking of Northwestern, they're taking, as we move along here to the later games here, the next set. All Northwestern has to do is keep winning. They're taking on a struggling Michigan State team. Should be no problem for them. The Big Ten Championship is probably going to be set soon with Northwestern taking on Ohio State, potentially. I don't see anybody from the East really doing anything other than maybe Indiana. And that's Indiana having to hope that Ohio State loses twice, and that's not going to happen. That's highly doubtful. Also, at that same time, I'll be paying more attention to the Iron Bowl, which is has a right to match up once again. Number one, Alabama, Mac Jones, Najee Harris, that, that tree, well, there's no waddle, right? forgot about that. <laughs> but Alabama has receivers everywhere. And how in the world is, is Auburn going to do? Because Auburn was ranked in the top 15 to begin the season, and then they fell off a cliff. This one might not be on TV for very long. It might not be on my laptop for very long. There's also Pittsburgh taking on Clemson. I don't know. Pittsburgh has had some good games with Clemson in the past. They've given Clemson some fits. And if Clemson loses this game, you know, this, you know they're ranked at number three. If Clemson loses this game, it's over for them. It's it's definitely over for them this time. It's there's there's no slouch about. It. There's no doubts about it. With these tricky games with Clemson happen, you know Trevor Lawrence is coming back. The, the the tricky games do happen for Clemson. They really do happen, and they just have to stay alert against Pittsburgh. They have to stay alert. As far as the Pac-12 goes, the other team that's ranked in the Pac-12. USC taking on undefeated Colorado at 2.30. So this is going to be very interesting. Also keep an eye on, well, I wouldn't say keep an eye on Cincinnati at Temple. Temple's not good. Cincinnati might dominate this game. Don't even know why I even suggested that you people watch that. Because Temple's not a good thing. Not really good at all. They haven't even, they didn't even start play till October. So there's no point talking about them. Uh, yeah, Pac-12 trying to stay alive in the playoff. Beats USC. Don't count on them not being ranked because they might be ranked. They might. That's just me saying that. But, um, yeah. Um, as we get along here to the later stages of the evening, you know, the late slate as it is, right now of course there's going to be changes everywhere of course you never know like there already has been number nine georgia takes on south carolina georgia goes on the road to south carolina south carolina is not good at all so there's no point in really talking about this game the other two there is a point lsu despite having you know one of the worst seasons i have ever seen in recent memory starting off with a bad loss you know, losing everybody, they have given Texas. They've given they they've done it. Texas A and M in the past. They've given A and M a lot of losses in the past. And A and M still has the stigma to me. Maybe it's just because I'm a Texas fan. Maybe that's it. 
there's still something about A&M that's a little off. And that's because they've only, you know, played one team, really, that's ranked and got blown out. Just absolutely blown out. You know, A&M is ranked number five. And, you know, things could get interesting down the line, you know. Especially because they're still, they still have conference games left and whatnot. But they have to be the LSU. You know, LSU can score at will on you. They can score. You know, there's no, there's no denying that. But a and has to play a complete game. They have to, they have to not make mistakes. Kellerman cannot make mistakes. Jimbo Fisher cannot call a game that's not good. He has to call a good game. And last but not least is the number one, number eleven Oklahoma Sooners going on the road to Morgantown, West Virginia to take on the best defense in the Big 12, West Virginia. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Two of the best defenses in the conference. How in the world will Oklahoma solve the West Virginia defense? And if Oklahoma loses this game, I'm betting, I hope, I guarantee it, that Oklahoma is nowhere near the Big 12 championship. I just want that to happen because it's been three straight years of Oklahoma getting to the Big 12 championship game. It's been like eight of the last ten years that Oklahoma has even, you know, sniffed the Big 12 championship. And I just don't like it at all. And that's just coming from me, a Texas fan. So you don't like that. So, of course, you don't like that. But Oklahoma, they have to solve West Virginia's defense. If they can solve it like they did Oklahoma State's and just beat them down furiously, then, you know, this game will be over very quickly. But, yeah, week 13, going to be fun. Spread across two days. It's going to be very, very, you know, interesting to see how this goes. You know, there's going to be a lot that changes, of course, now. BYU could schedule a game very shortly. Um, who knows? Games could get canceled. You know, more Pac-12 games have been canceled. More Big Ten games have been canceled. More SEC games have been canceled. Um, so, you know. You know, ACC games have been canceled. Big 12 games have been canceled. Everybody's been canceled. The Conference USA might have gotten hit in the hardest, though. The Mac is playing just fine. I don't know why. But yeah, that'll do it for this video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video soon.